Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup with People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from across the globe. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Warrior met coal workers near fifth month on strike for a fair contract. Israeli forces kill 12 year old Palestinian child in the occupied West Bank. Eritrean refugees in Ethiopia face violence and uncertainty as war continues. Pedro Castillo takes office as Peru's president and sets policy agenda. In our first way, we go to the US where mine workers in the state of Alabama have been on strike for four months. Organized by the United Mine Workers Union, over a thousand workers at the Warrior Met Coal facility walked out on April 1st. This was after the company presented a contract that would cut wages, healthcare, and other protections. Workers had already, already accepted a $6 an hour wage cut in 2016 at the time the mine's previous owner had filed for bankruptcy. Despite earning steady profits over the years, Warrior Met has not restored wages. Hundreds of workers also picketed outside the Black Rock Company in New York on July 28. It holds around 14.5% of Warrior Met's outstanding stock. Workers from Alabama, Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia also participated in the protest. Warrior Met has deployed a series of coercive measures in an attempt to break the strike. It has used drones, hired private security, and even state police to surveil the workers. Journalist Kim Kelly has also reported at least four cases of vehicular attacks against workers on the picket line. Meanwhile, the company has frozen non-wage benefits and brought in temporary workers. Striking workers are demanding that the wages be restored to pre-2016 levels. They're also demanding safe working conditions and adequate health care coverage. As per reports, they're also made to work mandatory 12-hour shifts, 6 or every even 7 days a week. Warrior Met had offered a tentative deal in April which offered a $1 per hour wage increase. Another increase of 50 cents would be given over the next 3 years. The deal also retained the company's for strike policy, this meant that workers could not take time off due to unexpected events or injuries. The deal was rejected by workers with a majority of 1,006 to 45. 12-year-old Mohammed Al-Alami was shot and killed by Israeli forces on July 28. He was sitting in his father's car along with his two siblings near the town of Biet Omar. Located in the occupied West Bank, their house is near a permanent Israeli military base. Relatives stated that as Alamin's father was trying to turn his car, Israeli forces opened fire without warning. The family reported that Muhammad sustained five bullet injuries. Thousands of people gathered for his funeral procession held on July 29th. However, just as the procession neared the town cemetery, Israeli forces opened fire once again. 20-year-old Shokat Khalid Awad was shot in the head and abdomen and died shortly after. The Palestinian Red Crescent reported that at least 12 others were injured by live ammunition. Earlier on Thursday, Israeli forces also raided the Office of Defense for Children, Palestine, near Ramallah. Six computers, two laptops, hard drives, and client files of child detainees in Israeli military courts were seized. Israel detains and prosecutes between 5 to 700 Palestinian children every year. The DCIP works to document such abuses against Palestinian children and also offers legal services. The group has recorded the killing of 78 children by Israeli forces in 2021. As per the latest available data, at least 168 children are being held as security detainees. Hundreds of people gathered outside the UNHCR office in Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa, on July 29th. A protest was held to demand protection for Eritrean refugees in the war hit. Tigray region. Most of the protesters were among the 30,000 refugees who had been displaced from the Hitsats and Shimbela camps in January. 24,000 Eritreans are now present in two camps in the Maiseberi town, which was captured by the TPLF in mid July. The Agency for Refugees and Returnees Affairs has stated that at least six refugees have been killed by militants. The agency has also stated that all efforts by refugees to leave the conflict zone have been prevented by the TPLF. The Ethiopian news agency has also reported looting, sexual violence, and abduction of children from camps. The UN did not have access to the Maiseberi camps as of July 27. These camps are located in the south and western regions of Tigray, which were taken over by militias from the Amhara state. The TPLF has been fighting these militias to gain control over this region. Thousands of Eritrean refugees fled to the Afar region, which was already hosting 55,000 refugees. However, the war spread to Afar after the TPLF entered the state on July 18th. Over 20 people were killed and another 54,000 are estimated to have been displaced. 
The Ethiopian government has been joined by militias from five states in the war with the TPLF. Prime Minister Abe Ahmed had declared a unilateral humanitarian ceasefire on June 28. However, as the fighting continues, 91% of Tigray's population is now in the need of food aid. By the beginning of July, 400,000 people had already been pushed into famine. Food and medical aid supplies have been restricted, putting people at even greater risk. And for our final story, we go to Peru, where Pedro Castillo has officially taken office as president. The new government faces the challenge of rebuilding the country after years of neoliberal policies. Peru's GDP declined by 11% during the pandemic, and there was an increase in poverty and unemployment. The country also has the world's highest COVID-19 mortality rate, with almost 200,000 deaths. During his inaugural speech, President Castillo stated that vaccinations would be his first priority. Here is a video on the inauguration and the policy plans outlined by Castillo so far. Ejerceré el cargo de presidente de la República en el periodo constitucional. 2021-2026, juro por los pueblos del Perú, por un país sin corrupción y por una nueva constitución. And this is all the time we have for this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more such stories and videos, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.